Um, all right, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum. It is 7 o'clock. Um, and I will start with reading the preamble to every remote meeting. Um, good evening. In accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel, and this meeting of the Finance Committee is being conducted remotely. The Town of Lunenburg, in response to the COVID-19, is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health, Mass Department of Public Health, and the CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread, and all town facilities are currently closed to the public, although I'm not sure that that's still true. I guess I should double check that. I know it's open on a limited basis. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. The order which you can find posted on the town website on the COVID-19 information center page is accessed through the town manager's webpage, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. If during this meeting you want to make public comment but are unable to join via Zoom or a telephone, feel free to send an email during the meeting to tburchfield at lunenbergonline.com and uh, it will be read at the public comment portion of the end of the meeting. For this meeting, we're convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. And with that, um, any votes that we do take at any point during the meeting will be taken by roll call vote. And with that, I will find the agenda. And we will go, uh, the only announcements I have as of right now are no, there are no talent bank forms in my inbox. So um, please go out and drum up some, some business for us since we're now down to five members. Um, it would be helpful to um, try to, to find other people who might be interested in participating with us. We do not have Heather tonight as she will be taking um, some vacation time and Karen let me know today that she's not going to be available tonight either so we will not have any town manager or finance director reports tonight. With that, uh, I will open it up to public comment from anyone on the committee. Does anyone have a public comment? Just no public comment. I'm sorry? Oh, Just thanks to thank Michelle. Thank you to yes, Michelle Walton yes. participating. Yeah, all the Michelle, work that she did. Michelle was really kind of. I think she just kind of left the way she did because she knew that we couldn't get together for um, carrot cake anyway. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's but it. But no, I am certainly, yeah, certainly do wish her well with her um, ongoing studies. And, I, and um, that's very exciting change for her. So. I, I um, found her a, oh. as a key piece of the diversity of the finance committee of the last yeah. year also. Yeah. Uh, it was great to have her on uh, yeah. for the last couple of years. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she's going to no question. Speaking of diversity, Thanks, speaking of diversity uh, she was one of the, I think, what, the two members or so that, that are three members, I guess, were non senior citizens. And so, therefore, <laughs> she, gave, she gave the diversity so much, the committee so much needed diversity, you know. I, I, I was thinking from, was I was thinking from point younger. of view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and her point of view may have been assisted by the fact that she didn't feel an, an, an immediate need for things coming out of um, the Eagle House. But um, <laughs> just me. so with that, um, if there's no other public comment from anybody on the committee, um, we have public comment from the public. Madam and Chairman. Mr. Rogers, yes, yeah, Mr. Dave, Rogers. Ro Dave Rogers, 82 Highland Street. I'm not, I'm not sure 
uh, because of uh, the fact that the town manager and, and the town uh, finance director uh, are unable to attend tonight, we can get an answer to this. But I'm, my purpose in calling is to see if we could get an update as to uh, the status yeah. of the committee that was formed to uh, get prices uh, for architects, uh, and review plans uh, for the the uh, Passios building. Uh, the reason I, I raise that question, um, and I, I know that maybe we don't have an answer, but at least uh, we could find out about it probably. Uh, because of the uncertain financial times that we're in, um, I wonder uh, if a decision is made to to stop uh, that process temporarily or if we're still going ahead uh, to spend the money uh, for these plans, given the fact that, you know, things are so uncertain. So if you could enlighten me, that would be fine. If not, maybe we could find out from somebody and they could post it somewhere so that the public could understand. Um, okay, well, I, I can't, yep. but... Okay, I can't, but Dave Cassios is a member of that committee, so I would ask if, um, if he's aware of any um, discussion in that vein. Yeah, Dave, I, I would encourage you to uh, review the YouTube video of our last meeting. Um, yes, it is moving forward, and we are executing the 100% of the agreed-to contract. And how much, how much was that? A contract price, Dave? I'm sorry, I don't have it on the top of my head, but uh, if you know what the amount appropriated by town meeting was, it was very close to, if not exactly, that amount. Okay. All right, well, uh, I'll just give you my, my two cents worth uh, about that, and I understand and uh, what's what's happening, but it, it just seems to me that, for instance, if we get, if we get prices um uh, and then we still don't know uh what the the foundation of our budget is et cetera et cetera um i i just wonder the uh the implications of spending that money and not being able to move forward or not moving forward and uh, i just wondered if it it could be put off to um you know uh, a later date but you've answered the question and i appreciate it what okay. Would, what is there anything? For? What was that? I'm sorry. Was that what you? Was for? Passio's what, building. The design. Building. Of the building had to do with the architecture, the architect design of the Passio's, I believe. Is that the contract you're talking about, Dave? Yes, it's the, yeah. the all the work that needs to go into coming up with a redesign proposal for the building and bring it to town meeting. That is our that is our charge based on the article that was approved at town meeting. Right. Dave Dave Passios, the um, the contract is in place and in full force and effect at this point. Correct. To my understanding, it was supposed to be finalized signed and moved forward during the past couple of weeks and into the first week or so of July. We'll have an update uh, around the 13th of July. Okay. And that money, that money was appropriated by town meeting in 19 or 20? 20, 20 I believe. 19. 19, yeah. Yeah, you're right. 19. Spring 19. Yep. Okay. Then All right. I guess we'll Thank you very much. In July. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great night. Good night, Dave. Okay. Um, we do not have minutes. We there's not too much to talk about with the budget review with Karen not here unless somebody has something they wanted to bring up with the budget review. Um, so I thought we might move into a town meeting review. Hey, uh, Terry, um, I just saw John's expression on minutes. John sent me an email on comment um, from minutes from, I believe they were April 8th. Um, April 2nd, I think. April 2nd, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, those minutes were approved at our last meeting. We reviewed them and approved them. Um, but I have not submitted them uh, to the... Uh, uh, to the clerk yet so i will it, john uh noticed a uh 
a uh, sentence structure issue that that I will correct before submitting. Nothing substantive at all. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank Ter you, Terry. Timelines for submittal of uh, minutes has been extended uh, exponentially, hasn't it, by uh, the state? I, I, oh, I heard I that discussed. Idea. I heard that discussed in other meetings that uh, because of the difficulty of uh, generating minutes from a video and a, you know video meetings and uh, just getting them submitted and posted that uh, the time frame is no longer the thirty days at least right at the moment. Yeah. Well, we're we're probably still over, but nevertheless, we'll get, we'll get caught up. Right. Um, the uh, the good news is is the beauty of YouTube. It's all there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does um, anyone have anything that they wanted to bring up regarding the um, town meeting? I I, I just I would like to make a, a general comment, if I could, and and that was sure. that you know Peter and I stuck to our guns about how we felt about uh, deferring uh, appropriations till November. Um, the citizens at the meeting uh, didn't want to hear of it, no. so that's a very small sampling of the town, but uh, of that group, they were basically saying, we want to do business as usual until we can't. That was my take from the meeting. Yeah, I think that basically um, the one thing I felt good about was between your amendments and Peter's amendments, and uh, the, the reason... You know, okay, so we seconded it so that we could discuss it. And part of um, what I wanted to use that opportunity to do and what you guys did was um, really made sure that the town has informed consent. So we let them know what, they, what the risks were associated with any of the things that, that were being offered. And so for the town meeting to, to vote the way they did, I can't say I'm surprised. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. Uh, I, I guess. Um, but as you said, they were informed. Mm -hmm. It was an yeah, informed and decision, I, and, and they chose to go the route they did. Absolutely, and that that happens. I, I want to say that the one of the first times that that the finance, and actually the other thing that happened that was interesting that um, I'm sure it was it's okay that it didn't happen. But the moderator never came back to us for a recommendation on, on the amendment. Um, yeah, I did. And actually, I'm not sure. Him. He never came back to us for a recommendation on, on the article the, either. Uh, on the article. So, um, which was interesting, but it was, um, at that point, I think it was pretty clear which way the town, the town meeting wanted to go. So, right. um, I, go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I. Um, you know, I've obviously put quite a bit of thought since town meeting into into what occurred, and I'm not sure that obviously had to do it over again. I might have tactically approached this a little bit a little bit differently, but I think at the end result was probably going to be the same no matter what. When you're hovering around a quorum of 50 people, half of which are are town employees in the in the room, um, many with a vested interest uh, in the result of the article. Um, it's, it's probably a fait accompli and, and, you know, interestingly, I had a, a conversation with Mr. Rogers earlier today and, and he made the point, you know, if you don't, if, if you haven't done the work to get the votes, um, you, you shouldn't necessarily think that you can rely upon your argument at town meeting to get you where you want to be because people are walking into town meeting largely, um, with, with a bias to begin with. And, and, you know, I think that was evident, uh, during, during the meeting and, and, and I don't fault anybody for their position. It is what it is. And I don't fault anybody for not coming to town meeting. I mean, it, it was a, uh, it's an unusual situation. Um, that being said, the, the other article that I had seriously considered making an amendment to, um, and I, I wavered in the minutes before the article and, and ultimately, um, it, it was partially at part error, part part just not having my thoughts together right to make the amendment um, was to amend the um, stabilization article 
uh, to also include the unappropriated free cash. And what I was thinking at the time was that the 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 requirement to extract that money from the stabilization account should we need to do do so um, would require another town meeting vote and in all likelihood in november um, there will be a new round of certified free cash that we could potentially administer which would include that amount um, and so in the interest of not belaboring the conversation and not exactly sure um, how I was going to formulate it, I decided to, to pass on <clears throat> making the amendment and allowing the meeting to, to proceed. But, but I also think that, you know, we as a committee put in an awful lot of hours into two budgets um, over the course of the last several months. And, and, you know, the town manager and our professional staff, notwithstanding, put in many multiples of the hours that we put in. Um, but at the end of the day, the town manager got her budget um, with very minor modifications that came from uh, suggestions from the finance committee and public comment and finance committee hearings. Very minor modifications. Uh, and every member of the board of selectmen, every single member of the board of selectmen in attendance spoke against the amendments that Dave and I made. Uh, and so... I personally think that we are facing an unprecedented fiscal crisis that is going to hit us in the months of July, August, and September. Um, and, and I'm here to do my duty, and I will continue to serve on the Finance Committee um, as long as I'm able. Um, but the responsibility is shared um, by our professional financial staff, the town manager, and the Board of Selectmen. And they need to come to the table with solutions as we enter this period of crisis. Okay. If I could, Peter, to your point about the uh, stabilization and the unappropriated uh, free cash, the only reason I held off on it was because the funding money for the streetlight article was part of that dollar amount. Another complication, yeah. And, and, then, and then to get it passed over, uh, I was, extremely disappointed i think that should have been debated on the floor whether it passed or not or whatever happened to it uh i, I think it needed to come out on the floor and i'm really disappointed that it didn't I, I still haven't had a chance to really ascertain what happened there oh you know what i'm going to tell you <laughs> if you if you have it if you have it from the parties that that drove that yeah, not, not what happened. Not what happened on town meeting floor. What actually happened behind the scenes is what I'm looking for. Oh, nothing happened behind the scenes. I think basically what happened was um, Dave Blatt thought that he would have more time. He thought the meeting was going to run longer. So by the time that he had come to the meeting, um, it had already been. We were at, we were at the end, and then so, basically the issue that presented, which I had absolutely no idea about, was that. Um, the Saturday Saturday is Sabbath for a lot of people, so right. what he he ended up trying to leave church early to try to get there because and I didn't know that there was a whole bunch of people who live in Lunenburg who can never attend town meeting because it's always on a Saturday. So basically, because there was nobody there to present the article, or there was nobody else there from Green Communities or anything, then. Um, you know, like, yeah, obviously at town meeting, it was, it was passed over. So I, 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 I really disagree with the way it was handled. If I had known two minutes earlier, I would have moved the article to the floor, but the, the discussion and the announcement on the uh, stage was that Dave Blatt had communicated with them and asked that we pass over it. That's the part I'm I'm not clear on. I'm I'm not so sure that happened. I didn't hear that. And and the other thing is that if I had been thinking a little bit better when Dave did show up, there was no reason in the world why we couldn't have asked for reconsideration because the exact same people were still in the room. 
and and that's that's on me. I I wasn't. I was asleep yeah, at the switch no, I, when and that I, happened. And I will say that, based on where I was sitting, I did not hear anybody say Dave asked for it to be passed over. I thought that um, the only thing I heard was Dave doesn't seem to be here, and they didn't know of anybody else who was going to present. So basically, when Jim Murphy was looking for you know, who was going to be presenting it, that's when they talked it. But I did never heard anybody say um, that but all the, um, he had to be passed over. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to play the tape back again because I speci specifically heard that, and that's why I didn't speak up, because I would have moved it to the floor, and I had enough, between Peter and I, we had enough knowledge of the uh, nuts and bolts of uh, the whole process in the article. Uh, and with the mood of mm -hmm. town meeting, I think it would have passed. It might have. It would have been a fairly comical presentation, though. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Right, right, right. Well, though, actually, if they got to the point of recon well, if, they, if, if um, and I think that was the other problem was, I don't know, I'm not sure if, um, if Dave had done anything to make himself recognized, because I'm not sure if anybody necessarily realized that he came in. I saw him. So, I went up and talked to him. No, I know you saw him. Yeah, no, no, I know you saw him. And I, but I don't know if, if Tim Murphy saw him and, you know, like made any kind of a connection. So, yeah. I don't know. Which is, which is so, surprising because he sat all by himself in the section that was reserved for people without masks. He was the only person in that entire section with a mask on. So it's kind of hard to miss right, a right, single right. person in that big, that big a number of seats. Anyway, it, it's water under the bridge at this point i will be asking right. to join yeah, the green communities november. to bring it forward in november and then basically um I, I think the other thing that was um interesting was uh the information that jay got um around the whole negotiating um tax for um making the purchase so which is going to be another interesting thing is that then um since i mean i don't know if if when you do put those numbers together, if you do come up with a, you know, like, yeah, 90,000 sounds good. No, you know, like just if we appropriate that at town meeting, that's what UNICEF is going to hold out for. That would be my sense. You know, yeah, so that was, if that really was actually one of the happened. thoughts I, sorry, Terry. That was actually one of the thoughts I had when it was in, when the appropriation request was increased to 100,000. After I had a chance to think about that, I, it should have been left in the original dollar amount yep. and work with it there. And, and the problem is, Jay, I don't disagree with the information you got. It's great information. But that negotiation for that final purchase price doesn't start until the project's funded. Yes. Then, then you go. Then you go strong in the negotiations. Right. And to Terry's point, probably would have been better to even fund it at eighty thousand, and say this is, you know, this is what we got to work with. But but, if there's actually, um, like in that information, that there's actually a formula that's supposed to go by. Yeah, and and, produce, and that's another that documentation. Right. And and that's something that Dave Yeah. And that's something Dave has struggled to get out of them and, and maybe yep. maybe we find a way to force it through uh through Boston or whatever because yes, I, I agree. There's a depreciation schedule somewhere yeah. that gives you the exact dollar amount and they're not giving it up. Yeah, well, it would be interesting to see, but yeah, because I don't know who then reaches out to DPU, whether that's green communities. Yeah, I think it will be. For what? Okay. Anything else from town meeting? I was just mostly, I was I was kind of like, you know, like, I thought sure it was going to be just two hours. So, <laughs> um, I, was glad, I was glad it was only three. Yeah. Um, I, was just, I was just glad they got the last article moved onto the floor before that group left. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't have made it through oh, that last article. Yeah. If that had been a quorum challenge, that wouldn't have gone. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I'm glad it did. I'm glad that they got there. Yeah. But if I'm not mistaken, once the article's on the floor, you can complete it and then the oh, challenge. Sorry. That's my understanding. Did we lose quorum for the last article? 
We were close. No, we very were close. Very, very, very close. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people left. What was the, what was the what? last article? I don't even the know. last article was the liquor license. Um, the Jags. Uh, oh, yeah. And and yeah. the the article prior to that was the second of the two um, earth removal. Earth removal. Yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of our uh, excavation uh, community left after uh, that article. Yeah. I think oh, that's right. why they yeah, put. I sorry, I, I think that's why they put Michael Ray Jeffries in in uh, fast forward reading that uh, article. <laughs> <laughs> It could be, could be. Um, all right, the, the deck group assign the the assignment in charge. All right, so at this point, um, John and Peter and Dave, I was assuming that you wanted to be part of that. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to be stretched thin initially with uh, just, I was just uh, sworn into parks this evening, um, and we've got some... Uh, hot items that we're going to be working on in the next few weeks. Um, I haven't been part of a meeting yet, so I can't make any comments uh, in regards to anything to parks at this point. Um, but I am going to be a little bit more busy than I have been with that. Um, and obviously, I resigned from the Board of Health as of today also. So I, uh, um, in terms of the, the subcommittee, um, I, Dave was not at the last meeting, so I do think that it's probably worth, you know, kind of revisiting the charge if he is going to participate on that. Um, and I think that we should also, you know, think about the timeline in terms of what we're what we're trying to achieve here. Um, you know, we're all, you know, I, I'm 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 pretty busy as well, but I, this would be a priority for me just because I want I, I think that this is crucial just to I deal with issues like Mr. Rogers brought up around, you know, um, potential major projects that are coming around um, mm -hmm. in the in the in the environment of a uh, of a fiscal crisis. Uh, and so I, I think it's something we need to pursue. That being said, I, I think that this is something that, you know, we Number one, we need to think about what a report potentially looks like in the October, November timeframe, perhaps uh, in conjunction with a fall town meeting uh, and or if we decide that we would like to um, uh, encourage another symposium like we did last year uh, and perhaps include this as the, the co as part of that content package. Um, the the other thoughts that I had was that, you know, this is clearly going to require some town resource uh, to help us figure this out. We're probably going to require some cycles from Karen, uh, and we're probably going to require some cycles from um, our financial advisors uh, that, that help us with, um, you know, uh, credit ratings and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, which, you know, I feel confident bringing forth with the support of the Finance Committee, um, but it's going to require a degree of coordination and scheduling through the town manager and the, the finance director. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that basically at this point, that I mean, I'm comfortable with, and who knows, if we do have, you know, two new members and, and any of them are, are hot on on that type of a project, that would be good. But um, I have to say, I kept I kept waiting for Michelle to say she wanted on, and and I should have taken that as a sign that at town meeting she was going to say goodbye. <laughs> 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 so I was like, I'm, I was just so surprised. She didn't say, I'd love to do that. <laughs> so um, so if um, if Peter and John, if you guys want to go ahead and take the lead on it and get started, you you at least um, Dave, did you watch the last FinCon meeting? Yes, I did. Yep. Okay. And one of the no, things I <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things I said to Peter, I think uh, just before town meeting started, was that I've changed my my view on that just a little bit. But his comment about um, capital exclusions really not being appropriate in that discussion is I agree with for the most part, except for the fact that if one or two funding scenarios are put together uh, to demonstrate what 
our pol- how our policies affect those scenarios, uh, I think at least one of them should show how um, a capital exclusion would look in comparison to those other scenarios. Yeah, can I'm going to say a, that we're probably... Can you, can you be a bit more specific, Dave? I'm not quite sure I followed. Well, sure. if you pick a project, and, and I don't know which one to pick, because the, the very large projects, you would never want to try to do a capital exclusion in one year to pay for a $10 million project. Okay, but so if, let's if, say knocking down the old primary school. Yeah, okay. Yep, half a definitely. million dollars, right? Right, right. And, and that, that's a big number compared to what it really is going to be. I mean, the 300000 I went for three years ago was an appropriate number today to get that accomplished and have money left over. But, uh, yeah, something like that. Because uh, capital exclusion, uh, you know, with the exception of the fact that, you know, like the town of Ashby, they don't do any capital except through exclusion. So it's only every X number of years. So when they do you know, a million dollars in capital exclusion, they haven't put on non-exempt debt or exempt debt over the previous years like we would we do every year or, or many years, let's put it that way. So they, they choose to go with the capital exclusion, get it all paid for in one year, and then settle back into their their compressed budget. Right. And I think I think one of the other things that's going to be an interesting thing to see with that is that Ashby started it that way. So if every year they have a debt exclusion, it's almost like they never, it's, it's not like it's new debt anymore. It's, it's kind of like the tax rate isn't necessarily affected because they're doing the debt exclusion. Cause right. They're just, they finished the last debt exclusion. So now they're just taking out a new one. So um, the first that, time that we do it here, it's going to, it's, it's going to be, um, Interesting. Yeah, the problem is that we're carrying so much debt already, whereas they carry zero debt. They carry it for one year, it's gone. And then they no, don't no, borrow for that. a number of years. Yeah, and, no, and I, I agree. That, but but they, yeah. but I don't see that I don't see the money from the regular budget. Um so once we're we're not doing um it's not exempt but um borrowing that that money isn't assigned someplace else so so the money's still going to be spent and it's not going to be spent on capital anymore that would be my take on it uh, yeah it i i think but i think my point is that it it potentially frees up money back into uh, what you just said actually back into the operating budget rather than being tied up in debt over a very long period of time and costing the town interest expense. Uh, I think our numbers and interest costs for our exempt and non-exempt debt, uh, even though uh, non-exempt is not a big number, but you put the two of them together and it's a fairly large number, just in interest costs. And in my home budget, in my home budget, I I don't have interest costs. I don't allow it. <laughs> we could all be. I will so say it probably helps. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> probably helps. Generational in the same town. <laughs> I, I guess. I guess I should qualify that. Yes, I do have a more. Still have a mortgage, so oh. there is some. But oh, that's yeah. the only thing. Okay. So, uh, so, is there anything that we need to do formally to move this, or or what? What do you suggest, Terry? No, I'm just I'm just assigning I'm I'm assigning you, Peter, to chair a subcommittee of two members of your choosing. At this point, you do have two volunteers in John and Dave. However, you see it, that sees fit to report back to the finance committee, um, and and actually, we could probably do it monthly if you wanted to just report monthly if you're meeting um, and which way you're going. But you don't don't have to. But we would look at maybe um, in September if we are potentially looking at a symposium, which if there was a symposium, my guess would be that wouldn't be that would be a good thing to bring up. But my guess would be if there would be an awful lot of discussion around trying to get through the period of time with the financial situation being what it is, um, because by then we'll have open school or not, and we'll have you know um, we'll we'll have a better yeah. sense of what's going on statewide and nationally um, with budget numbers and. Um, 
and projections for the um, economy. So, I mean, it's, it's it's a scary year, but it will be interesting to see. And if if we do want to, I guess, if we do want to pursue the symposium, it would probably be good to be. Maybe we should think about what we would look for in the fall symposium, and then try to to see what the board of selectmen and planning board and school committee might be interested in. Um, so, I, yeah, I can reach out. Yeah, well, maybe all, I'll wait till all three of those boards have two new members as well. So, um, you know, there's. I'm not. I'm not sure that a symposium much before annual town meeting is going to be all that practical um, no. this year. You know, I, I would love to repeat it under normal circumstances, but I think we're in a, we're just in a weird time. And, and I'm not sure that I'm, I'm just not sure it's going to be appropriate given, given what's about to be put on all of our plates. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, right. if, if we get handed a 25% cut, by September, October, then we all better sit down and figure out what we're going to do. Yeah, I mean, the, the, it, it may, you're, you're absolutely right, Dave, which is it, it may be a very different kind of conversation, which right. is perfectly fine as well. Yep. Right. It just wouldn't be a symposium. Right. That would be a completely different kind of meeting. <laughs> um, so, I mean, in a symposium, basically, it's, it's really um, to be informational. So, um, so it might be, I mean, but yeah, I think, I think you're, I agree with you, Peter. Um, and I think that's why I was struggling to think, well, we'll probably talk about COVID-19 and the effect on the economy and that all that stuff we talked about that we needed, you know, we have to say goodbye to, or yeah. everything I think, just recovers really quickly. And I think worst case, this, right. I, I think worst case, this debt report um, could be submitted at town meeting, either verbally or in oh, writing or, or something. And, and it can be used as a reference for not only ourselves as these projects, you know, eventually come out. Um, and, you know, the TC Passios project is probably the, will be the first out of the gate to get reported out. Um, we'll have that as a barometer of sorts to, to, to help us kind of figure out the the feasibility of that at, in relation to downstream downstream projects. Well, I would also expect as an outcome that um, you you folks will be making recommendations around the fiscal policy around debt, and that there should also be a presentation to the board of selectmen yes. and um, a determination as to whether or not we want to recommend changing the policy in any way. Um, based on the, John, the, well, that's certainly what I'm hoping is a, is one main outcome is the uh, first of all uh, uh, revisiting the debt policies and seeing in light of what we know is what what debt we know we're going to likely uh, uh, get in the next uh, the, the next few years and some of the other related policies. We it may be time for a. Uh, just a, a revisit of the uh, financial policies that we worked on now. It, it must be six or seven years ago. They need to be uh, at least relooked at. Starting with this, starting with the debt policy. Yeah. They've served us well, but they need to be. They need to be well, examined. They're, they're, they're not commandments. They're just uh, right. solutions. And right. 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 And, and, yeah, and I want to say that basically when we worked on them the last time, I, I want to say that the. Um, Lunenburg primary debt coming off was, you know, eons away, it felt like. So so we were never going to make any headway until that point. And I know that at the time that we did the policy um, recommendations and set the rate to the extent that we did, that we didn't want to exceed the 11% and the 14%, a lot of that was because that's where we were. So there's a piece of me that at that time also wanted to not have it that high. But you guys are going to be looking at all of the projects that are coming down the road, and and maybe it's going to have to stay there. Um, or, you know, who knows what else you'll see in the numbers. Um, I, I, I know that we went through them a lot at that time, um, but a lot of the stuff that was on there uh, is 
hopefully coming off during some of our tenure. That would be nice. Um, but but anyway, so yes, so that's that's the charge, and um, and again, the only situation where there would be an open meeting violation, to my knowledge, and and I'm happy to double check this um, for um, for comfort reasons, would be if all of a sudden there were four members of the finance committee sitting in the meeting, um, in which case then you could not meet. Um, so or we'd have without, to post. It, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, I would appreciate it, Terry, um, and I'm happy to do it as well, but I think as chairman of the finance committee, I'd appreciate it if you could uh, just follow up and cross T's and dot I's with, uh, with the town manager or, or to the town council through the town manager or something like that just for... No, I will. I, I'd prefer I, not I, to be called on the carpet that. in a couple of months for no good reason. Uh, one, one suggestion I'd make, if you want an answer quickly is called the Ethics Commission in Boston. You get a call back from an attorney within a couple of hours. I had a question last week and I got a call back same day within an hour and 30 minutes. And they'll answer open meeting questions, Dave? Because I, oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Con conflict okay. of interest and open meeting. Okay, all right. Well, then I, I can call that. That's not a big deal. Any comfort, Peter, you'd have a lot of co-conspirators. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have plenty of... <laughs> Plenty of uh, company in my jail cell. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think they'll go that far, but yeah. No, I'm, I'm, my money's my money's on me, so I'm. I'm we can have a picnic in the town <laughs> pound. <laughs> That'll be it. Since we're all together, um, do you want to? Uh, do you want to just pencil in a meeting time and date sometime? I know you. You all are quite a lot busier than I. Uh, um. Just, just to sort of. Carry this further. I, I don't want to have the same conversation in two weeks. Yeah, that's a great point, John. Um, what I would suggest um, is we look at um, at least to get the thing started um, off Thursdays for a half an hour, an hour, just to get the thing moving and, and figure out who's going to do what. So a week from uh, a week from today. A week from today, same bad time kind of yeah. thing, and I, I can set it up with a Zoom or something like that. That's not a big deal. Uh, uh, I might have a conflict with that, but uh, you guys go ahead and meet, and I'll, I'll okay. do the best I can to. Uh, All right, and I'll it. circulate. I'll circulate an email uh, probably first thing tomorrow morning, gentlemen. And uh, mm -hmm. and uh, if 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 a, there's a better time, if it's a Saturday morning or whatever, that's that's all good too. Yeah. Sure. Just be aware we're going into Fourth of July weekend next weekend yep. too. So, yep. does it matter? It does for me. I'm out of town for five days. If if All I can right. get a if I can get a stable Wi-Fi uh, signal, then I'll sit it on vacation and <laughs> and attend a couple of meetings. But it depends on the Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's it's easy to forget that there's life going on out there. Um, All right. Any committee reports? Um. Yeah, I I have a school committee uh, related report. And I apologize, I don't have my notes in front of me, um, and it would probably take me more time than it's worth to get my notes. Um, but I did uh, want to alert uh, everybody to the fact that, um, first of all, the school committee um, lifted their hiring freeze as a matter of necessity to fill open positions mm -hmm. for the fall. Um, but probably more pertinent from a financial perspective, um, Mr. Cassidy reported the the outcome uh, of negotiations uh, that have occurred between D Bus Service and most, if not all, of the towns uh, in Massachusetts that they have contracts with. And um, effectively, the the outcome of that there's a we stopped paying them when we closed the schools, um, and under Mass state law, we can't pay for a service that is not delivered to us. So we were bound by law to stop paying them. Um, however, as an op operation that has to pay rent and notes on their buses and this, that, and the other thing, um, as you might imagine, a complete uh, halt in revenue uh, is something that would put an operation like that um, into uh, into severe jeopardy. Um, and, and in doing so, potentially put our transportation services 
into severe jeopardy come fall. Um, and you may recall that that contract was bid about a year ago, uh, and it was a single bidder. There, there was only one bid uh, for that for that contract. Um, so there's obviously a um, a very important partnership uh, between municipalities and our our contracted bus services. So basically, what what was negotiated out um, is a one time payment uh, to round out the school year. Uh, which was effectively 50% of what the contract would have cost if we were actually transporting students. Um, and the number I don't have in front of me, but I seem to, and that's why I'm absentmindedly missing my notes, but I seem to recall it's about $130,000. Um, and so the school committee voted uh, to approve uh, that, that negotiated settlement with D bus service, uh, basically to pay them half of the um, of the of that contract. Um, the other thing that Mr. Cassidy reported was was that you know a next most logical question is is well what are you doing with the rest of that money? Um, because that was part of their uh, fiscal year 2020 appropriation, uh, and apparently what he's doing is prepaying um, some outside placements which state law allows us to prepay up to three months in advance, I believe. Um, so that may have the effect of giving us some relief uh, as we enter fiscal year 2021 and the school budget and some of the uh, inevitable burdens that are about to hit the school budget. So um, I want to make you guys aware of that. It's nothing, obviously, that we can act on. Um, but, uh, you know, it seemed to be a... Um, a fairly sensible outcome to a pretty bad situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that's yeah, pretty much most school districts um, have been discussing just that with transportation when this whole thing started. So um, that was one of those that was going to be particularly hard to, to get around. Um, one, one thing you'll notice. Yeah, Terry, uh, just in uh, follow up on one comment that uh, Peter made. Um, sure. Because of the incorrect listing of the uh, rescinding of the hiring freeze, uh, they will be revoting that next Wednesday. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it wasn't. It, w it wasn't listed properly on the agenda, and I suggested that before you get an open meeting complaint, that uh, you revote it. You know, yeah. Dave, it's interesting that you mention that because I noticed that as the meeting proceeded on the agenda. And my only thought was, was that they had reposted an amendment to the agenda and I just didn't have it. But as it turns out, um, it wasn't posted. Right. I, I brought it to their attention the next day or, or when I was able to oh, good. view the entire tape. Other committee reports. Uh, just from the Passios Committee, as I mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, we'll be meeting, I believe it's on the 13th of July, to uh, get an update as to what progress has been made um, at our previous meeting. Uh, as I said to Mr. Rogers, we uh, voted to uh, kind of instruct the town manager, even though it's, it's her purview as to when she signs the contract, uh, but to move the process forward and uh, get the architects into the building so that they could start the scans and the analysis of uh, uh, critical systems and, and stuff like that uh, so that we weren't dragging our feet through the summer and not making progress towards our, the report that we are supposed to bring to town meeting. Um, my personal impression is that it looks like we're going for next spring. I think that's the earliest we can expect a comprehensive uh, proposal to come out of our committee. I think you should try to push it back to November next year. You might have a better shot at it. Well, the, there's there's two there's there's a couple of trains of thought to that because if you take it to a special town meeting, it's a two thirds majority, whereas a regular town meeting, it's a simple majority. For a debt exclusion? Uh, well, I'm not I'm not exactly sure what the town manager was specifically thinking about when she said that. 
the the two were not in the same sentence, so I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right. I'm curious now. Yeah. Because I my um, my belief is that debt exclusions are majority votes in. of both are majority votes, aren't they? Of both town meeting and the general election? A special town meeting changes a lot of things because they are special and it's much easier to get articles into the special. There's a a ballot. There would still need to be a ballot vote, though. Right. Right. So basically, because there'd have to be a... uh, So at the meeting, you just say that we will appropriate the money once it's raised, and you're going to raise it through the debt exclusion. So if that doesn't pass, then it doesn't matter what you just did at town meeting. So I don't know if that means that she's looking at non-exempt debt. I don't know how much the cost of the project is looking to be, so I don't know if she thinks she can do it within the budget. That would be the only situation where you wouldn't require it going to um, a two-thirds vote yeah. so, or to a ballot. So I, um, I get the impression, although we've not had the discussion, the number in her head is different from the number in the committee set. But... Okay. We have to wait and see what comes out of the uh, process by the architects and uh, engineers. Okay. Um, if there's no other committee reports, before we go to public comment, um, Jay. Yes. You're up for renew. Did you renew? Yes. You have been reappointed. Thank you. By whom? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm. I'm asking that you've been. Have you been reappointed? <laughs> <laughs> not, that, oh, not that I know of. All right. So, did you? Um, but you let them know that you wanted to be reappointed. Yeah, because I got a email from Elaine with okay. the form yeah. that I resubmitted to her back in a few weeks ago. Okay. You know, it's I don't mind. I'll just. Yeah, I, I I'll didn't follow up. Okay, I didn't I'm pay sorry, that close ahead. attention to the uh, last two select board meetings, but that's when they did those mass reappointments. But I don't, I didn't, I didn't pay close appointed. enough attention to know they if Jay's can't. name was brought up. They can't. They, we yeah. have to be appointed by the by the uh, the appointments committee. committee. Oh, no, that's right. Appointed. That's right. But, yeah, yeah, the yeah. finance yeah. committee appointments yeah. committee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The American Dodgeball Association of America. Yeah. Uh, the committee of the committee. Yeah. But but um, but the uh, the school committee the school committee needs to appoint its member to that committee before that committee can can vote. So that that needs to happen. Okay. That, well, we don't have any votes coming up before before the middle of July. So if if we, if there is a glitch. I'll just double check that they haven't already done it, and then they just didn't get back to you because since you had submitted it all that time ago, there shouldn't be a problem with it. They have not. If, if they, they did, have not convened. The, they have yeah. not convened. Yeah. I was going to say, unless it wasn't an open meeting, they have not. <laughs> but if they don't convene, if they don't reappoint or confirm Jay's reappointment, then that brings us down to four members. It does. Yeah. Which is. Uh, Skating on thin ice. That's uh-huh. not a good place to be. Yeah. yeah, we've been there, John. We've been there. I know. Um, it's, un- yeah. un- it's, it's uncomfortable. Terry, I would um, I would suggest that uh, we bring that to uh, um, the, the the attention of the chairman of the board of selectmen and the uh, the vice chair of the school committee to make sure that those appointments to that committee are acted upon. Uh, post haste, yep. so that that committee yeah. can meet. Yeah. And get- town so town moderator is yeah. 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 town moderator is chair of the finance appointing committee. He might be the appropriate one to talk to. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll just, and then I'll just he pushes the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what I've done in the past. So um, I just wanted to make sure that yeah, we weren't down to four. Thank you, Jay, for awesome. coming back. <laughs> All right. Um, and then with that, that means that um, next, our next meeting, um, on, which is scheduled for the 9th at this point, and I'm going to assume we're going to have it, um, that would be when we reorganize. So if, if anybody is, is, you know, got a, got a hankering for, um, to be the chair, the, vi- yeah. the vice chair, or 
or the secretaries then um, you know think about it so um, so that's coming up but um, so with that is there any public comment from from anybody still remaining if I may a, a quick one um, as I mentioned earlier uh, as of 5 p.m. this evening I have resigned from the Board of Health uh, due to not being allowed to be on two uh, elected boards at the same time under the charter of the town of Lunenburg. Um, just want to remind everybody that the position I've just vacated will be advertised for 14 days. Talent bank forms can be turned in and then we'll, there will be a joint hearing of the Board of Health and Board of Selectmen. Uh, I believe on July 14th is the target date they're uh, going for right now. Um, so if there is anybody out there new interested in getting involved in town government, that's another opportunity. Dave, when does the uh, Board of Health meet? Uh, they meet on the sec uh, first and third Mondays of the month. Okay. And in the summertime, they only meet once a month. on the third Monday. Right, then, and with that, again, the, we meet July 9th, um, 7 p.m. I'll look forward to seeing you guys there. Hopefully, if you happen to run into anybody that looks like they enjoy crunching numbers, you know, try to laugh through them with a town bank form. I think that we'll probably try to um, you know, see if I can get Chris Menard on that now. You know, um, He's, he's ready to proceed with the the because otherwise I was going to just shut down the town elections page. So we'll probably <laughs> tell something else. the talent bank form up there for for everybody looking for committees. So hey, I, I know um, this is out of order, but I I just would like to comment too. By the way, those guys, um, Dave and Chris, and I, they they mm -hmm. were really extraordinary this year in. Uh, the folks that opened that Facebook page and um, the recruiting, I think, that, that sort of went on. All of a sudden, we had a uh, um, a wave of volunteerism that happened, I think, over the last few weeks, uh, it would seem. Um, and, uh, and the fact that we got the word out and we got people elected to positions that uh, would have otherwise been uh, probably vacant for a year. Um, or we'd have to go into appointments uh, craziness. Th this is a much better way of doing it. Um, short of yep. following the process as it's intended to be followed, uh, which wasn't available this year. So, um, you know, I think that that is really evident of, uh, of some great spirit and civic mindedness that we have in, in Lunenburg. Yeah, that was, that was, that was great. It, it went really well. Um, all right. So with that, I'm, I'm more than happy to take a motion to, to adjourn unless you guys want to chat some more. Terry, could I ask one more question if you can think of uh, the time frames off the top of your head? We have two seats open. I'm assuming one of them would be – no, they're both till the next election. Uh, uh, sorry, never never mind. Um, and then, then the terms would vary, I believe, on those two. I mean, uh, never mind. I'm thinking elected seats. Uh, I guess my question – my question is – my question is, the two open seats, do you know what those time frames would be on those seats? Well, one of them has to be three years because that um, Jay was the only one re-upping this year. So the vacant one that we already had, I believe, was a three-year. Um, Michelle's, I'm not sure. Michelle had one Michelle more year was, on yeah, her? Michelle was one year. Um, Dave and I have two more years so t uh, terry you have one year left yeah dave and i have two years left right I and left. and john G dave and i and john all have two years left right. um and so right. jay so would have three and it looks like this vacancy would have three yeah and and that's because i, I think that's correct they're both uh they, yep. uh so so michelle yeah, would be a one year Jay would be a three-year, and and one other vacancy would be a right. three. Year. So the the only reason I bring three. that up is that a there might be three. somebody on the fence that might be more apt to uh, try it for one year. 
Right. Uh, so I think that should be advertised a little bit every time we bring up the open seats. That's a good point. Well, now we can at least offer the one year, but before it was going to be a three year seat. Right. So, Correct. Um, yep. Actually, before, if they'd have joined last year at this time, it would have been a one-year seat. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, all right. So with that, I will entertain a motion. I move we adjourn. Second. 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 Okay, all Dave, in Dave, favor. Dave, Mo, Dave moved. Jay second. Uh, aye. Aye. John. Aye. Wait till I call you. Cause was, <laughs> Jay. Aye. <laughs> Dave. Hi. But I, for myself, good night. Good night, everyone. everyone. Have a good weekend. Happy Fourth of July. Yes. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Happy Fourth of July. Enjoy your vacation.